Hello friends, welcome to learning sessions and today in this video we are going to discuss very very important chapter from module A that's related to theory of probability and uh, uh, many of questions can be asked from this newly introduced chapter from module A over here. So do watch this video till end if you want to clear your all the concepts related to theory of probability over there. So we'll be discussing the related concepts of a probability and uh, further different type of events over there and different type of uh, probability theorems in that particular case whether it's related to the uh, poison theorem binomial theorem or the normal distribution theorem over there so uh, kindly please do confirm the audio video quality and further if you have been facing any issues uh, in uh, uh, enrolling to the courses at our portals uh, in that particular case you can get back to us uh, on our whatsapp number 83609 you can download our android application which is available in the name of iibf learning center and if you are ios user do download my institute application and use the organization code gegkt so as to enroll right now and start preparing for for the same and right now we are having a very great deal in which you need to apply the coupon code exams and you'll be getting flat 82% off on all the listed courses over there so do enroll right now and start preparing for the same so let's start the session it's related to theory of probability over there now what is actually the probability let me just tell you the first case that, that uh, if I say that I am having uh, five balls I am having five balls and further I want to select one ball out of it I want to select uh, one ball out of it. How many ways I can be selecting a ball over there? Now in that particular scenario, the probability I'll be calculating would be related to uh, 5C1 that uh, I want to select only one ball out of the five. So that is actually the way number of methods I can be selecting. And what if I say that I'm having the balls of different five colors over there and what will be the probability of selecting that particular one color ball? Let's say there is only one red ball in this particular five balls and further I want to select one red ball only. What will be the probability? So if I say there are total five events, total five events, that total how many ways? Total five ways in which I can be selecting a ball and probability of selecting a ball is one, one over here. That is only one event is there in which I can be selecting red ball over there. So what will be the probability of selecting red ball over there? That will be one by five over here. So that's actually related to it. We'll be learning each and every concept related to the same and uh, you can actually be get a proficient into it. Okay. So probability is actually related to what it's related to possibility of happening of particular event over there. Okay. And for Further, it's particularly related to it's a numerical measure of your chance or possibility of occurrence over there and value varies from 0 to 1 okay so the value of probability varies from 0 to 1 over there and further first of all let's learn the concepts related uh, then it is a concept of factorial whensoever I say uh, 5 factorial what does it indicate it indicate 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 that is actually the factorial and factorial of 0 is equal to 1 over here and otherwise if I say 3 factorial it will be equal to what it will be equal to 3 into 2 into 1 so okay so that's actually related to factorial over there after that it's a very important concept related to the permutations and combinations over there so whensoever we are talking about the permutation permutation it's particularly arrangement in which the order actually does matter okay so if i'm having uh, let's say two coins i'm having two coins with me and i toast two coins what can be the different outcomes it can be head head so we are having the two sides head and tail side so we can be having two heads or it will be case that we are having one head one tail or it will be case we are having one tail one head or it could be the case that we are having two tails over there we are having the two tails over there so whensoever we are talking about the permutation but we are talking about the permutation it is particularly the thing in which the uh, priority order does matter order of priority does matter uh, like first of all we are having head over here and we are having a uh, uh, tail after that and in this particular scenario we are having tail over there and after uh, head after that now in this particular scenario particularly these are two different things these are two different events over there but other than that if we look at from the concept of combination it is single it's a single combination it's a single combination uh, that it uh, it's along with head and tail over there. Okay, so that's the difference between the permutations and combinations over there. Because in case of permutation, the order does matter. For if we consider the permutation, these are actually two different uh, 
uh, events over there but if we look at from the combination point of view we are having the single combination over there so that's the thing difference between them okay so in permutation in order the of the object is very much important over there but that's not the case with the combinations over there now we'll be learning that what would be the different notation related to uh, permutation so the permutation uh, we can say the notation of permutation is p and r that is npr that is npr over here now over here n is the number of things n is the number of things and r are the things which are selected at a time like if i wanted to select if i wanted to select one uh, ball out of the three it will be related to uh, 3 uh, 3 p 1 3 p 1 okay and the same way if we say if we basically concluding it through an example over here okay so let's say we are having the three things with us a b and c over here and what are the different uh, three types over there and we are to select the two uh, different things from the three let's say we are having the three types a b and c there are three different things over there and we are to select the uh, two things okay so what are the different events that can be there it could be that we selected a b or it be selected a c or we selected B C or we selected B A over here and I told you that in case of permutation these are different these are different A B is separate from B A okay because the priority of order does matter okay and further in particular case it will be C A and further C B okay so that's the case related to the C uh, six different events over there and this is how actually uh, we can simply be calculating there can be sim uh, six ways by notation 3 p 2 because we were to select two things out of the three so how many different permutations can be there it will be 3 p 2 and now how to solve 3 p 2 it's particularly n factorial if i say npr let me just tell you npr so we can simply say npr is equivalent to what it is equivalent to n factorial divided by n minus r factorial n minus r factorial so if we will be solving this this one so it will be what it will be 3 factorial divided by 3 minus 2 factorial that is 1 factorial over here okay now 3 factorial is equal to 3 into 2 into 1 and 1 factorial will be 1 equal itself itself okay so into 3 into 6 that is 6 so we solve this over here so it's actually make it quite easier for us now if we if you are having let's say if i'm having 10 uh, 10 balls and i'm to select 8 balls and i'm to select 8 balls what different methods can be there what different ways can be there permutations can be there no it, it will not be c it will be p over here because i am talking about permutations not the combination because in case of combination the actual order never matters but in case of permutation the order does matter so how we can solve this uh, we solving 10 p2 uh, 10 p8 so it will be the same way 10 factorial divided by 10 minus 8 factorial okay so it will be 10 factorial 10 multiplied by 9 multiplied by 8 and so on okay and further divided by 10 minus 8 means 2 factorial 2 into 1 okay so that will be the case so we have to multiply them up all so as to get that how many uh, permutations can be there that how many different permutations can be there okay so this is actually how we can be solving it after that it's related to that uh, in how many ways two balls can be selected from the three balls now if i if we are to look the combinations that how many ways it can be selected now in that particular case the order does never matter so that is actually the combination okay that's actually the combination and the uh, notation is related to what if we are to select through uh, two balls out of three it is 3c2 and further it's particularly related to ncr okay if we, if we say look at the formula for the combinations it's particularly n factorial divided by r factorial multiplied by n minus r factorial okay now in particular case of the permutation there was no r factorial in the denominator but it's now the case of the combination then r factorial will be there and how we can be solving it it will be 3 factorial means 3 into 2 into 1 and for the r factorial r is equal to 2 so 2 factorial that is 2 into 1 and n minus r that is equal to 3 minus 2 that is equal to 1 factorial multiplied by 1 okay so simply there will be three ways there will be three ways the ball can be selected two balls can be selected out of three because the order does never matter in case of the combinations over there okay then after that it's related to random experiment or trial over there or trial over there so that's actually the thing related to it now let's learn what is actually random experiment now when you're going to conduct an experiment and you're having very identical conditions and you know the possible outcomes over there that's actually a random experiment or we say to be trial 
like we tossed a coin we know either it will be head or it will be tail and further we are throwing a dice we will be getting a uh, number out of six only okay so that's actually related to what it's actually related to random experiment or trial over there okay after that it's related to sample space and sample points over there now it's actually sample space now first of all let me just tell you that set of all the possible outcomes set of all the possible outcomes of a random experiment now if we toast a coin over there we are having the sample space of h and t either we can be having a head or we can be having a uh, tail over there so that's actually related to what it's particularly related to sample space over there and it is actually denoted by a capital s it is denoted by a capital s and the number of actually events of number of terms in the case of the uh, sample space that is denoted by n s that is denoted by n s that is sample points those are said to be the sample points over there is that clear okay so we basically are rolling a dice over there we are having the sample space of 1 2 3 up to 6 over there and for the n s will be equal to 6 over there so that's the case related to it so that those are the sample points over here okay now after that it's related to event now event is actually what it's particularly a event is particularly what it's a subset of sample space now if i say uh, that i'm having i'm tossing two coins like i told you before i'm tossing two coins over there and the possible outcomes are uh, head head tail head head tail and further tail tail okay and further i say that i'll be having at least one head so the event is particularly i'll be having at least one head so there are three outcomes in that there are three outcomes in that so that will be what that will be the subset that will be the subset over here is that clear is that particular thing clear over here okay and it is actually represented by uh if i say that uh, if i having an event over there let's say this is a this is s over here so i'll be simply saying it's a subset okay so when we are having one head at least one head that's a subset of s over there that is a, a sample space over there or a subset of s over there so that's the case related to it okay and uh, after that it's related to let's learn the different types of events over there first of all it's the certain events uh, certain events are particularly those events when you are quite certain about that you will be having the events out of these only like when i'm rolling a dice i know that i'm going to have a number between one to six only that's actually a certain event when i'm basically tossing a coin i know that i'll be having either head or tail when i'm basically picking a card from the deck over there then i know that i'll be having one out of one of the 52 cards only so that's a case related to it okay and for the if i say that i just rolled the dice and i'll be having seven is it possible that's not possible that is an impossible event that's an impossible event and further the event corresponding to the set is particularly null over there because it's particularly the impossible event and there can be no subset it cannot be the subset of the sample space okay so the impossible event cannot be the subset of the uh of the space over there okay then first of all then after that it's related to mutually exclusive events over there mutually exclusive events so if the happening of any of the event actually restricts the happening of the other over there so that's actually related to what that's actually related to mutually exclusive because those two things cannot be occurring uh, simultaneously in the same trial itself that's not possible if i say i'll be having head as well as tail in the same uh, same event over there is it possible if I'm basically, I'm tossing a coin, if I say I'll be having both head and tail in the same event, is it possible? No, that's not possible now. Nah. For a single coin, it's not possible at all. So that's particularly what, that's, it's, we say, it's a mutually exclusive event over there. It's a mutually exclusive event over there. After that, it's related to equally likely event. Now, equally likely event when there is a equal chances to all the outcomes. Like if I'm basically throwing a dice, there are equal chances that it can come either one, two, three, four, five, or six over there. So that's actually related to they are having equal chances. Okay, equally likely to occur over there. Okay, then after that, it's related to exhaustive event. Now, what do you mean by exhaustive? When the when when the different sample when the different events over there are occurring and further they have occurred in such a manner that uh, they completely coincide with the sample space itself that's actually related to what that's an exhaustive event let's take the case that uh, we toast one coin over here we toast uh, two coins over here and further when we toast two coins we toast it for different times one time we got head and the other time we got uh, tail okay we toast one coin only not two coins we toast one coin only and for one time we got head and for the other time we get to a tail over there and if we just looked at these combinedly this the space the uh, the where uh, the events over here are actually are actually coinciding with the sample space over there now sample space were simply h and t 
okay we because we toast the coin and further there was sample space equal to h and t over there and further now the total of events are is actually coinciding with the sample space over there now the actual part is that if we look at this events combinedly this is actually equal to the sample space over there so that is it what that is a exhaustive event okay after that it's related to what it's related to the complementary event over there complementary event over there if we just look at the mathematical terms of the same so one time we basically rolled the dice and further we are having we actually rolled the devices so sample space s will be equal to what it is actually will be equal to 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 that's the sample space that's the sample space now we are having event a where we selected the odd numbers 1 3 5 over here and it's a event b where we are having the even numbers that is two four six over there now if we just look at the union of these two a union b this will be equal to what this will be equal to sample space okay so that is why we say that the these two come uh, that these two events combinedly are what these are exhaustive events over there then further that it's related to the complementary event complementary event now a and b events will be said to be the complementary event if these are mutually exclusive as well as these are exhaustive over there like i gave you an example related to uh, tossing a coin over there in one event we were having head and other event we were having the tail now those are actually mutually exhaust uh, mutually exclusive because occurrence of one actually leads to the, the other will not occur because those cannot occur simultaneously okay those are mutually exclusive over there okay and also those are exhaustive those are exhaustive because these are coinciding with the sample space over there okay so such events are said to be what those are said to be the complementary events over there i hope that you must have understood the concepts related to it so far okay now we'll be solving some questions based upon that okay the question over here is we are having actually eight boys we are having eight boys and further we are having five girls okay and we are to select three boys and further we are to select the three girls out of it now how this can be done how this particular thing can be done over here now first of all we are to look in the thing that what combinations will be there we are just to find the combinations okay just uh, uh, take in mind because over here we have to select it's not particularly thing that we are given an order or something like that okay so but the thing is we have to just select that how many ways we can selecting be three boys or three girls over there so for that particular case we'll be selecting three boys out of eight so it will be eight c three over here and the second one it will be related to what it will be related to five c three that we are to select the three girls out of five over there okay and uh, that will be the first one that we need to solve so eight c three can be written as eight factorial divided by three factorial that is r factorial n minus r that is five factorial over there so we just open this that is eight into seven into six into we can simply say 8 into 7 into 6 into 5 factorial over there. So 5 factorial can be cut out and 3 factorial can be written as 3 into 2 that is 6. So that is 6 is gone. So 8 into 7 is particularly what? It is equal to 56. Okay. It is equal to 56. And 5c3 will be equal to what? It will be equal to 5 factorial divided by 3 factorial and 5 minus 3 that is 2 factorial. And 5 factorial can be written as 5 into 4 into 3 factorial over there 3 factorial is cut down and further we can cut actually 3 factorial and uh, 2 factorial is equal to 2 so 5 into 2 that is equal to 10 okay so what will be the total methods that they can be selected so we have to multiply these two over here okay so just let me tell you because these are actually these are actually what these are these particularly related with each other no these are not related to each other we have to select the three boys from the eight boys three girls from the five girls okay so we'll be multiplying these so it will be equal to 56 into 10 that is equal to there are 560 manners that we can be selecting that we can be selecting the boys and girls over there okay because the case is actually it could be the case that we will be having the different combinations when these two will be selected like we selected uh two of uh, uh, three boys from here and for the the three different girls from here so that will be forming another different combination over here that's why we just multiplied it that's why we just multiplied it okay so that's a case related to it i hope that you must have understood okay 
After that, it's related to mathematical definition of the probability over there. Now, I already told you that I'm having the sample space is equal to S over here. And further, if I say I want to calculate the probability of A over there, in that particular case, uh, we'll be looking at the total number of terms which can be there that is represented by NS and the uh, number of ways the uh, the occurrence of event A, that's the uh, N of A, that is number of A over there, event uh, in which the number of ways the event can occur over there. So that's actually related to probability of occurrence of a over here okay so that's actually related to probability of occurrence of a over there now let's have a look at the question over here it says unbiased two unbiased coins are tossed simultaneously what is the probability of getting at least one head over there what is the probability of getting at least one head over there now what will be the sample space the sample space is written over here that is two heads one head one tail and two tails and one tail one head that's a sample space okay and the, what is the number of sample space it's equal to four it's equal to four and at least one head it will be what it will be uh one for this one because we are having at least one head over here here too and also here so that is the three term three things okay so what will be the probability it will be three divided by four that will be the probability that you will be having at least one head and that you will be having at least one head over there okay then further let's have a look at the addition theorem over here so first of all we are assuming that a and b are two events over here and further these are the subset of the uh, sample space s over there and are not disjoint over there because these are exclusive not exclusive and further then the probability of occurrence of a or b and a and b both over there what is actually related to that that if i say that i am having one event a and we are having the other event b over here b over here now what will be the probability of a and b together okay in that particular case if i just add that probability of a and b together that is a union b that is a union b in that particular case it is equal to what probability of a plus probability of b but we have to subtract this particular part the intersection part over here intersection part over here that is why we just subtracted probability of a intersection b over there that is to be subtracted Okay, so that's the case that you need to memorize that uh, whensoever we are adding basically two events which are particularly related to each other, those are not exclusive because there is some there is some relationship between them. Okay, so that particular thing is to be subtracted when we have to basically combine the probability of these two, we are to actually subtract the uh, intersection part over there. And further, if these are mutually exclusive, in that particular case, probability of the intersection of, uh, we can say, uh, in that particular case, that will be equal to what? If the probability of... Uh, occurrence of a and b over here it will be actually the union over here not the other one it will be the union over here so it will be a union b so it will be a union b over there there is good probability of a and b because there will be no intersection if we are talking if we are taking the events a and b to be mutually exclusive those are not related to each other that will be something related to this one so we are having event a over here and event b over here now these are not related to each other so in that particular case probability of a union b will be equal to what probability of a plus probability of b over there okay and further if we are having three non mutually exclusive uh, events over there a b c so mutually exclusive if we're talking about the non mutually exclusive three events over there what that indicate it indicate that we are having the three events and for the that's the case okay now in this particular case this particular intersection is common between A and C over there and further this is a common intersection between B and C and further this particular intersection is common between B and C over there okay so that's the case and further this particular part that I'm basically darkening uh, that's actually intersecting between these three over there okay so that's the case that we need to remember so if we just look at the probability of A union B union C over there what will be the probability what will be the probability it's it will be the uh, union over there not intersection it will be the union over there because we are talking about the uh, probability of uh, all three over here so it will be particularly related to what it will be probability of a plus probability of b over there plus probability of c over there okay so that's the case probability of c over here and further we will be subtracting the intersection part of this three because that's actually going to uh, cover again and again okay because that's already covered in a and this particular part is already covered in a and also in b so we have to basically separate the intersection part okay so it will be probability of a intersection b probability of a intersection c a intersection c and further probability of b intersection c that is to be subtracted and also the probability of a b and c altogether that is to be subtracted that is minus probability of a intersection b 
intersection C. So that is to be subtracted. So that's the case related rate that how we can actually be adding the probability. So that's the addition theorem. Okay. After that, it's related to conditional probability. It's related to conditional probability. Now condition is particularly related to what that probability of occurrence of A if B has already occurred. If the event B has already occurred, that's actually the conditional probability and it is represented by what? It is represented by that if I'm saying possibility of event A in that B has already occurred. So that will be basically represented by B has already occurred, now probability of A over there. This is actually how it is represented. So this particular represents probability of A if B has already occurred over here. So that's the case related to it. So that's the case related to it. Now if the events A of A and B are that, that have occurred and A does not depend upon the occurrence of event B that if these A and B events are independent. Now the first case we basically read about the notation that how we can write that probability of occurrence of A that uh, B have already occurred over there but the second case over here it is related to what that if the events A and B are such that that the occurrence of A does not depend upon the occurrence of event B over there occurrence of A does not event basically depend upon the occurrence of B over there that A and B are independent event. Okay. Now that particularly will be equal to what? In that particular case, the probability of B upon A will be equal to probability of A over here. So that's the case related to it. Is that clear? Is that clear? So this thing will be true only and only if A and B are independent event and the occurrence of event A, uh, event occurrence of event B is not going to basically affect the occurrence of event A over there. So that's a case related to it. After that, it's related to the multiplication theorem. It's related to multiplication theorem over there. Now, let's say we are having the two events, A and B events over here. And further, these are actually associated with the sample space. These are associated with the same sample space over here with an experiment over there. And then the probability of simultaneous occurrence of A and B that is actually related to multiplication of these two. That is actually related to multiplication of these two over here. Okay, so that's the case related to it. So we can say that the probability of occurrence of these two events, which are actually from the same sample space over there, in that particular case, then the probability of simultaneous occurrence means we are talking about the probability of A intersection B over here. A intersection B over here. What that probability will be equal to? That will be equal to probability of A and further multiplied by probability of uh, event A that B has already occurred. So that's actually related to it. And also it's equal to probability of B and further probability of event B that A has already occurred. So that's actually the case related to it. That's actually the case related to it. And that's actually what that's like, that's the multiplication theorem. That's related to the multiplication theorem over here. Okay. So in that particular case, we need to basically memorize one thing that uh, probability of A intersection B is equal to multiplication of probability of A uh, multiplied by probability of uh, uh, A that B has already occurred and also equal to probability of B and probability of uh, B event that A has already occurred. So that's a case related to it. And after that, it's related to the independent events. Now I told you that probability of independency, what is actually related to it? Independent events that occurrence of the other event is not affecting the same. Now in that particular case, this, if we look at the same probability of probability of occurrence of A that B has already occurred that is equal to what that is actually equal to I told you that A and B if A and B are independent events in that case probability of occurrence of event A that B has already occurred is actually equal to what it is equal to probability of A isn't it okay so that's the part related to it now is particularly related to probability of occurrence of a over here so that's the case related to it so when we are talking about that there are two independent events over there in that particular case the intersection between will be equal to what that the simultaneous occurrence will be there that the simultaneous occurrence will be there that will be particularly related to what that will be equal to probability of a intersection b is equal to probability of a multiplied by probability of b over there so that's the case is that clear is that particular part clear over here okay after that, it's related to random variable. It's related to the random variable over here. Now, random variable is actually related to what? It's particularly a variable which is associated uh, a real number with the each element in the sample space. Okay. So if we are having a sample space over here, that is S, and with each event, a number is associated, a real number is associated. That's actually what? That's actually a random variable. Okay. And further, it could be the discrete random variable or it could be the continuous random variable over there. Now, when we're talking about the discrete random variable, in that particular case, that will be a 
finite number that will be a finite number a countable finite number over there that particularly related to what that if we say that age in years or number of arrivals in clinic or something like that so that's particularly what that will be related to the discrete random variable where the values are distinctive and for the those would be the particular values over there which are finite over there or it will be the case of the countable infinite numbers also or possibilities over there so that's actually related to the discrete random variable and when we talk about the continuous random variable like we just read about the classes over there class intervals over there so we're talking about the percentage or something like that okay or we're talking about the way over there so that's particularly related to the continuous random variable okay so in case of the continuous random variable it can particularly taking what it can be particularly taking infinite number of possibilities over there there are infinite number of possibilities okay so that's a continuous random variable okay now let's have a look at the probability distribution of the random variable now I just simply gave you an idea related to the sample variable over there no, no, random variable over there random variable was particularly related to that what's over the different events where you're having the sample space over there and uh, we're going to actually associate a, a real value to that particular uh, uh, event over there and further probability distribution will be doing what it is actually a statistical function over there that will be describing the possible values of the random variable so let's say the random variable is x over here and the probability uh, distribution particularly related to whatsoever the possible values of these random variable over there and for the corresponding probabilities corresponding probabilities that the x can be taking a value in this particular range over there that's actually what that's a probability distribution over there possibility value of the occurrence of uh, x over there possibility of the values of x over there and for the uh, the probabilities associated that uh, in what range it can be there that's particularly related to the probability distribution over there okay and this particular range is bounded between the minimum and possible values let's take the case that we are having the range from 0 to 50 over here okay so the value of this particular uh, probability value of this particular x can be varying in this particular range that is from 0 to 50 over there now let's understand this by way of uh, example so let's take the case that uh, number of customers that who have arrived in the bank over there so as per, at a particular uh, period of time it's actually a discrete random variable over there and the values of a random variable along with the corresponding probabilities of the discrete probability function it is said to be what it is said to be the probability mass function over there let me just tell you that uh, number of customers who are visiting that's a discrete random variable that's a discrete random variable let's say uh, 20 customers visited 30 customers visited 40 customers visited okay so that's a case related to it. but related probability of association of associated related probability associated with this discrete variable over there that's actually presenting what that's actually presenting the probability mass function that's the probability mass function over there okay so let's say that fx over here that fx over here is a probability mass function of uh, discrete random variable x over there now what's the different possibility algorithms of x over there let's say fx is a fx is what it's a probability mass function it's a probability mass function of x over there so that's the case related to it where fx will be greater than equal to zero over there okay now over here we are going to take the first case when we say that uh, summation of fx over there we say that the function fx over here it is greater than uh, equal to zero over there okay so that's the case related to it and what's all the different values and what's over the different values of this function as a probability mass function of x over there if we just look at the sum of this the sum of all the probabilities will be equal to one the sum of all the probabilities will be equal to one i already told you that the probability can be ranging from zero to one okay probability can be ranging from zero to one and if we just look at all the event spaces over there in that particular case the total of the probability will be equal to it equal to what it will be equal to one over there let me just elaborate this for you let's take the case that uh, this particular variable discrete variable over here can take the different values okay like one two three and so on over here and further the probabilities associated with the occurrence of these particular values over here let's say it's 0 0.1 it's 0 0.2 and so on okay so we are basically taking function x as a function of the values as of values of the probabilities associated with the discrete values over there that is a probability mass function that is a pmf over here and further i'm saying that if we will be adding up all these over here the total will be equal to one the max the total will be equal to one that is actually what i read, uh, wrote over here so simply i'm saying that uh, function x is having a value which is actually greater than or equal to zero and further sum of all the values of a function of x is equal to what it is equal to one over here so that's actually related to it okay so that's the thing related to it that's the probability mass function thing related okay 
Now the second one, it's related to, it's related to probability density function. So one we one thing we learned about the probability mass function over here, and the other one it's related to PDF. That is a probability density function over here. Now let's take the example uh, that you are having the stocks S1 over here, and for the the variability the variability that uh, expected returns on this particular stock is basically continuously changing it's a continuous random variable over there okay and further the range of the values of the random variable over here is actually the probability that we are having a continuous range over there we are having a uh, infinite range over here from where we can actually be saying that we can be having a expected return in this particular infinite range over here in a con in, uh, in a continuous manner over there and when we are taking the function for the same and when we are taking the function of the same that the value can be taken in that particular manner in a uh, long term because in case of the previous PMF we were having the discrete values but in this case we are having the continuous values over there okay so over here function x is particularly related to what it's related to we are having the values but those are going to the continuous values over there and that is what that is a PDF that is a probability uh, probability uh, density function over there that is a probability density function over there okay so fx over here is representing the pdf over here and further the x over here the it is particularly related to different values of x over there which is actually continuous uh, random variable over here okay and also the fx over here is actually greater than or equal to zero over there it's actually greater than or equal to zero over there and dx over here is representing the is representing the area so x dx combinedly over here is representing the area that is bounded by the expected return probability values over there and if we are to basically look at the uh, value like we in the case of pmf we done the summation of fx over there in that particular case we will be doing the integral we will be doing the integral of the fx dx over there and that is actually equal to one in this particular scenario of the pdf over here okay so that's the case related to it i hope that you must have understood the case so what we can infer for the probability distribution of the random variable, we can simply infer one thing first of all, it's related to that the function value of x is actually vary from 0 to 1 over here, maximum it can be equal to 1 and the lesser one it can be equal to 0 over here and further the value of f minus infinity, if we are having the continuous scale f minus infinity is equal to 0 and further if the value of plus infinity over there like we did in the case uh, I told you related to pdf where I told you that the integral of uh, fx dx fx dx is equal to 1 okay now in this particular scenario uh, f plus infinity is equal to 1 over there so that's a case related to it and fx is non decreasing function and that is continuous also okay so that's a case related to the properties of the probability distribution uh, of a random variable over here i hope that you must have understood the cases related to it after that it's related to the expectation and standard deviation of a, a random variable expectation and further standard deviation of the random variable over here now whatsoever the distribution we are having like we are having the random variable and it is distributed for all the different events over there in the sample space and further we are having a uh, all for the different variables like we are having the discrete values we are having a uh, probability associated with the same over there okay probability associated with the same over there and when we look at the mean or average value expected value is particularly related to what it's a mean or average value of the distribution so whatsoever the distribution is there mean and average value of the same is particularly the expectation and it, it is represented by e of x e of x okay where we can simply be saying that uh, uh, it's particularly expectation is function of uh, average and further it's related to x fx over there this is a function related summation of x fx over there uh, where fx is a probability mass function i already told you related to probability mass function in case of discrete values you are having the probability mass function over there so we are having the uh, fx over there okay summation of x fx is particularly related to what it's particularly the expectation over there that is the average or mean of the distribution over there we are going to, going to basically get the expected value now whensoever we are just looking for the expected value of the random variable expected value of the random variable variable that can actually be the expected to occur per repetition over there now when so the repetition of the events is there and we say that this particular is expected this particular value is expected okay so that is the expectation and particularly it is a average or mean of the distribution over there and further when we talk about the variance of the random variable when we just look at the uh, variance of a random variable it particularly expresses the scatteredness of the random variable like we are having the data over there and we are having the mean value over there and how far these values are being scattered over there that's actually the variance 
okay so we are having the random variable which is actually scattered over here over for the different values for the particular events over there now in that particular case the scatteredness is actually what it's a variance over there so that's actually the vx we are uh, talking about and that will be equal to what that will be equal to expected uh, uh, well uh, x square expected value and for the minus expected variable square over there so that's actually related to the variance variable x over here i hope that you must have understood the case okay so that's the value actually related to it i hope that you must have understood and uh, after that it's related to the variance of discrete random variable i have already told you discrete random variable it's related to the variance of the discrete random variable so i told you that we are having two type of a random variable one it is a discrete random variable and the other one it is a continuous random variable over there and further i told you one thing that uh, for the random variable for the discrete random variable when we just learned about the things previously over there i simply told you that i simply told you over here that uh, what was the case we are having the pmf that is a function of x was related to pmf that is a probability mass function over there and i told you that fx summation of fx is equal to 1 over there and that was the case related to it and when we talk about the variance so formula is already written over here that is a e x square minus e x square and uh, then it's related to that uh, we are going to put the values over there that uh, this particular e x square and further we are going to multiply the x with the same because i told you expected function is summation of uh, x fx over there so we simply did the same over there x fx and for the the e x square value over there that's the case related to it so what will be the exact formula that you will be using in the questions over there so that will be actually be equal to what this these are the two things that we need to use first of all it's related to uh first of all the formula that will be using the questions that is v of x and further that's equal to summation of uh x minus e x and further square and further fx okay so this is the thing which we will be using and this one will the formula that we will be using so these will be the two things that will be using with us okay and in question there will be uh, no questions asked for the continuous variable if the question such will be asked that will be for the a uh, discrete variable only okay so that's a case related to it and simply standard deviation is equal to what it's a uh, under root of the variance it's a uh, under root of the variance over there so that's a case related to it now let's actually have a look at the properties of the expectation and the variance over there properties of the expectation and the variance over there so over here the expected function of ax plus b that's equal to a that uh, the constant will come out and uh, expected of a uh, variable of uh, expectation of x plus b over there and further if we are talking about the variance in that particular case it will be a square and for the variance of x that will be related to it okay this is how we will be calculating now let's try to solve one question based upon the same that so that uh, you will be having much more clarity related to the same let's have a look at it and after that we will be pursuing with the binomial distribution okay so over here we are having the uh, question with us and uh, we are provided with the uh, random variable discrete values let's say the values are 1 2 and 3 over here and we are having the function of the uh, function of x that is pmf that is a probability mass function probability associated with the uh, discrete variable over there that's let's say it is a uh, uh, 0.3 0.2 and 0.5 over here okay this is the uh, actually the probability distribution for these uh, the values of the discrete variable okay so that's the case related to it and further we are to calculate the expectation we are to calculate the expectation now expectation is what expectation is equal to it is actually uh, summation of x fx it is a summation of x fx now what is x fx it is 0.3 over here if we just look at the f Uh, x over there and x f x that's actually zero point three and zero point two into two that is zero point four over here and zero uh, point uh, that will be equal to one point five that will be equal to one point five so we will be adding them up all so that is equal to zero point uh, uh 1.9 and 2.2 that is 2.2 over here so that's the case related to it that we are having the uh value of x f x equal to 2.2 over there now if we have to calculate the variance of x over there so first of all we calculated the expected value of x over there that was quite simple using this particular formula and uh, now we have to calculate the variance of x okay now i told you the formula related to it what it was actually it was related to the two formula that we were to use first of all it was related to the uh, x square expected value minus e x 
whole square over there. So that was the thing related to it. And also we can rewrite it as per what? We can actually be saying now expected value. We can actually write the expected value over here. Now that will be equal to what? That will be equal to x square fx. Okay. So that was the formula. Expected value of x is equal to what? Summation of x fx. Right? Summation of x fx. That was the formula related to it. And further we'll be just rewriting the thing now. So the ex square will be equal to what? It will be equal to summation of x square and fx over here minus minus the value we have already calculated that is 2.2. So 2.2 square. So 2.2 square over here. So that's the case related to it. So we have to calculate the x square that is 1 into 0.3 that is equal to uh, I'm just writing the values over here. That is I'm writing the values related to x square fx over here. I'm writing the values related to x square fx over here. So that's probably related to one uh, square multiplied by 0 0.3, that is 0 0.3. And for the two square, that is four multiplied by 0 0.2, that is 0 0.8. And three square, that is nine and uh, multiplied by 0.5, that is 4.5. If I'll be adding them up all, that will be equal to 0 0.56. That will be equal to 0 0.56. So it will be 0 0.56 minus 0 0.56 it would be would it be 0 0.56 or something else so it was actually 4.5 not 0 0.56 it is 5.6 it's actually 4.5 plus 0.8 that is 0.53 of uh, 5.3 and up uh, 5.6 it will be 5.6 it is okay and also 2.2 multiplied by 2.2 that is equal to 4.84 4.84 so 5.6 minus 4.84 that is equal to 0 0.76 that is equal to 0 0.76 so the variance in this particular case it is 0 0.76 right okay and further and further that was actually related to calculation of the variance as well as related to the uh, related to expectation over there and if we are to calculate the standard deviation if we are to calculate the standard deviation what it would be it will be standard deviation would be equal to 0 0.76 under root that will be it that will be it okay so that's how you can be solving the things right i hope that you must have understood the concept related to it now let's uh, move further and uh, it's related to the binomial distribution now let's understand that why first of all binomial distribution is required then we will be uh, learning the probabilities related to the same that what it is it is actually okay so first of all, it's related to that. Uh, uh, let's take the case, uh, the same example that out of uh, three, uh, you're actually having the uh, three coins or let's say you're having the two coins with you. And further, you want to get really count the probability related to, uh, to having at least one head. Okay, so what are the different outcomes of uh, tossing two coins? It's head head, it's uh, head tail, it is tail head or tail tail. Okay, these are the possible outcomes. This is a sample space. Okay, and what's the, what's the possibility that you will be having at least one head? That's one, two, and three over there. So number of events three and total number of events four. So that's a probability. So that's a probability related to it. But what if I say that uh, you're going to toast 10 coins and for the probability of uh, having uh, five heads over there. So what's the probability related to it? And it will take a, a lot of day. It will take a lot of time and efforts. Okay, so as to calculate that. That is why actually we do require the binomial distribution uh, where actually you want to calculate the, uh, actually we want to calculate the things in case of the independent trials, repetitive independent trials over there, because the occurrence of one is not going to basically, uh, those are basically, basically mutually exclusive events over there. And further, that's not going to basically interfere with each other over there. So that's the thing where we'll be using the binomial distribution over there. Okay. And what is the function of binomial distribution? It is represented by fx is equal to what? It is equal to ncx and further p x and further q n minus x okay now what is p p is the probability of success q is the probability of failure and uh, p plus q is equal to one that is the total probability and further p uh, we can say q is equal to one minus p q is equal to one minus p over there so that's the case related to it and uh, p x over here is a probability function of mass over there p m that is a P x over here is a probability function of mass in that, that particular case. Okay, so that's the case related to it. Okay, now let's basically uh, solve the question based upon the same. Now we'll be solving the question over here. 
using the same. So what was the formula? It was actually, it was the, what was the formula? It was NCX, if you remember, NCX and for the P raised to power X over here and Q raised to power N minus X. Okay. Now find the probability of getting three heads from five number of trials. Okay. So you're having the five trials. You toss the coin for five times over there. So N is actually what? N is actually five. So five C and how many times basically what's the probability that you want over here? What's the probability that you want over here? Let me first of all, write the terms for you. Uh, like we will be starting with a simpler example. Okay. So that you can understand it well. So we basically took the case of, uh, uh, three coins over here. Okay. So we tossed three coins or uh, two coins over there and the probability we are going to check, let's say two coins are there. And uh, further, what is the probability of uh, having one head over there? That's the probability that is either there that can be head or that can be tail. So what is the probability of P that is half over there? And what is will be Q? Q is equal to one minus P that is equal to half over there because one minus half that is equal to half over there. Okay. And after that, after that, we are actually going to toast the coin for two times. Okay. We are going to toast the coin for two times over there. So N will be equal to what? N will be equal to two over here. N will be equal to two over here. Okay. So here per N ki value ke hai, N is equal N over here is actually equal to two over here. And further, we want the head to occur at least one time as per the example I just made up right now. Okay. So we want the head for one time. So R over here will be equal to one. Okay. So it is actually equal to one. We can actually write it as one by two over here. So as for easy calculations, so one by two and over here, it will be equal to what? It will be equal to the N minus X. Now N is two and for the x over here is one. So it will be one again. Okay. So two C one that is equal to two factorial divided by what? So whensoever it is N C one over there, N C one over there, that's actually related to the number itself. So it, it will be equal to two itself over here. Okay. So either way we can solve it. So that is two factorial that is two into one. And further it will be equal to R factorial that is uh, one factorial that is equal to one and N minus one that is two minus uh, one over there n minus r that is two minus one that is one again so it's actually again equal to two and for the one by two multiplied by one by two so it's actually we have solved it so what will be the probability it will be equal to what it will be equal to one by two only it will be equal to one by two only isn't it okay so that's the case related it isn't it or uh, we actually made some mistake isn't it just have a look at it that we were having the formula. Just let me rewrite this particular equation for you again. So let me just write the formula for you again over here so that you can understand it in, uh, in a quite uh, good manner over here. So what was the function? It was actually related to NCX and further P raised to power X over here and Q raised to power N minus X over here. Okay. Now N over here is equal to two and two C one because we want uh, only one head. Okay. We want only one head over here and further over here. The case is that we are having the P the probability of occurrence that is equal to half that is equal to X that is one again and Q that is half again. Okay. Because probability of uh, probability of uh, success and failure. Okay. So that's actually one minus P that is half again and N minus X. Now N is two and X is one. So it's again one over here. Okay, so it's actually half over here. And similar way, if we have to calculate the probability of getting three heads out of five trials, five number of trials over there. Now formula is quite simple, NCX and further P raised to power X and further Q raised to power N minus X over there. Now, what is the total number of events, independent events over there in case of the binomial, uh, binomial distribution that's actually related to five. Okay, so five and further, how many heads we want? It's actually the three over there. And further, what is the, Oh, what is actually the success probability that's actually equal to P. So what is the success probability? So it will be half and for the, the success probability must be same for all the trials. Okay. So it is half for each and every trial. So it's actually particularly related to half over here and further raised to power X that is three and further half again, because Q is equal to one minus P that is half again. And for the N was five and X is three. So it will be two over here. Okay. Now what is five C three? It will be equal to five factorial that is five multiplied by four multiplied by three factorial over here and divided by three factorial that is r factorial and n minus r that is two factorial over there so that is the case and further multiplied by one by two one by two one by two over there so that is actually equal to one by eight and further multiplied by one by four over here so that's the case and further you can actually be uh, solving it over here so two multiplied by one two and for the uh, that is one and for the two will be as such so it will be equal to what it will be equal to five by sixteen if i'm not wrong it will be five by sixteen in this particular question over here is that right okay now if we go for the mean over here if we are to calculate the mean over here what will be the formula 
for mean under the binomial distribution it is represented by m and that is equal to np over here and if we look at the variance over here if we look at the variance that is equal to npq over here and uh, further we can rewrite it as np and 1 minus p over here or also the standard deviation it is equal to under root of the variance that is equal to npq okay so that's uh, that you how do you remember over here so that's a case related to it okay so that's the case actually related to it now let's move further it's related to the poison distribution now in case of the binomial distribution i told you certain things first of all in case of binomial distribution i told you it is for uh, the independent trial must be there there must be the independent trial must be there and n must be a finite number n must be a finite number over there and for the probability of success that must be equivalent that must be equivalent for each and every trial over there so that was the case related to it but if the value of n is actually very large over there but in the case where the value of n is quite large over there and particularly and particularly in that particular case the probability of success is not near to half and more is not near to half and more in that particular case it will be quite difficult so as to solve the questions over there using the binomial distribution so for that particular case we are going to use a poison distribution over there and uh, further in that particular case n can be very large uh, first of all and probability can be very much uh, small over there and np that's the product of the uh, trials and for the probability that's a finite number that's a finite number and there we will be using the poison distribution there we will be using the poison distribution over there let me just give an example like there is a production center and further they are producing 20,000 bottles per day and in 20,000 bottles there is only uh, 10 bottles let's say which are actually defective which are actually defective being produced each and every day now we have to basically calculate the probability for the same definitely it's not the quite one it's not easier one because there are 20 number is quite large over there probability associated is quite low over there so there we'll be using what type of uh, theorem over there we'll be using the poison distribution in that particular scenario over there okay so that's the case what are the conditions n is large n is large over there p is small over there and p is a finite number that is a case related to the poison distribution and what is the function related to it the function for the same fx is equal to what it's a e raised to power minus lambda and further lambda raised to power x and divided by x factorial over there so that's the function related to it and further the value of x is actually an integer and further it can be an infinite number too okay so that's the case related to it and the value of exponential is given to be 2.7183 over there now let's solve a question based upon that so that you can understand it in a better manner over here okay so over here we are having a manufacturer who produces medicine bottles and find that 0.1 percent of the bottles are defective the bottles are packed in a box containing 500 bottles over there a drug manufacturer buys 100 boxes from the producer of a bottle using the poison distribution how many find how many boxes will contain no defective bottles over there okay number of defective bottles over there so that's the case related and we'll be solving it so over here we are having the and number of bottles are what number of bottles are 500 bottles over there and probability of defect is what it is 0.1 percent given in the question itself and for the what will the probability it is 0.1 divided by 100 because it's in percentage so 0.1 divided by 100 that is equal to 0 0.001 uh, over here and for the what will be the mean related to it what will be the mean it is actually related to np it's actually related to NP that is equal to 500 multiplied by 0.001 that is equal to 0.5 over here. Now we will be simply be using this particular formula over here. So over here, over here we are to find the probability where there will be no defective bottle. Okay, so X will be equal to what? X will be equal to zero. X will be equal to zero. So uh, lambda over here, it's particularly equal to what? Lambda over here is actually related to what? That's actually the mean over here. That's actually the mean over here and we calculate it by using the NP over here that is 0.5 over here. So we just uh, rewrote uh, re re the values over there and uh, that is e raised to power uh, minus 0 0.5, 0 0.5 raised to power 0 because x is 0 and divided by 0 factorial. Now factorial of 0 is equal to 1 over there and the value of uh, e raised to power 0 0.5 minus was given to be 0 0.6065. So this is actually what we calculated that uh, the probability, the probability we calculated that uh, uh, how many probability that uh, that the box will be containing no defective bottle is actually 0 0.6065 over there 
ओके सो दैट इज हाउ वी कैन कैलकुलेट नाउ मीन इज इक्वल टू वेरियंस इज इक्वल टू लैमडा ओवर देयर एंड वी इफ यू टू कैलकुलेट द मेजर ऑफ स्क्यूनेस स्क्यूनेस विच वी हैव ऑलरेडी कवर्ड इट वट इज स्क्यूनेस ओवर देयर लाइक आई टोल्ड यू ना दैट इफ यू आर हैविंग अ नॉर्मल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन एंड फॉर द इट्स पर्टिकुलरली पॉजिटिव स्क्यूनेस और नेगेटिव स्क्यूनेस सो दैट इज अ केस रिलेटेड टू इट ओके एंड फॉर द वी आर टू कैलकुलेट द्यूटोसिस दैट इज बीटा टू दैट इज इक्वल टू थ्री प्लस वन बाई लेमडा ओके सो दैट इज अ केस रिलेटेड टू इट एंड फॉर द लेट्स लर्न अबाउट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फैक्टर रिलेटेड टू मोड ओवर दियर नो इफ लेमडा इज नॉट एन इंटीजर If lambda is not an integer over there, then mode is an integral part that will be lying between the lambda uh, minus one to lambda over there. Now I'm saying if lambda is not integer, is not integer over there. In that particular case, the value of the mode will be lying between lambda minus one to lambda over there. But if it is an integer, the value it will be bi modal. In that particular case, it will be having two modes. That is lambda minus one and lambda over there. Okay, so that's the case related to the poison distribution over here related to poison distribution over here i hope that you must have understood then after that it's related to the gaussian distribution or we simply say the normal distribution okay now it is actually normal distribution when your curve is actually symmetric around the mean over there about the mean over there that's said to be the normal distribution over there and for the the probability distribution which is actually symmetric about the mean that is also the normal distribution or gaussian distribution over there now when so we are saying that the distribution is a normal distribution we we'll simply say that the standard error of the sample say sigma x bar is equal to what is equal to sigma divided by under root of n now sigma is actually the standard deviation of the population and divided by under root of n that is the total number of terms over there and mu that is a uh, that is actually the mean over here that the sample mean x bar is equal to the mu over here that is the mean of the uh, mean of the sample space over there okay so that's a case related to it okay so these are the two things so properties of the sampling distribution of a mean population are normally distributed over there sampling distribution has a mean equal to the population mean over there and sampling distribution has standard deviation equal to the population uh to the population de uh, standard deviation over there okay so that's particularly related to it that the sampling distribution uh is particularly standard deviation that uh, sigma x bar is equal to sigma divided by under root of n over there now let's solve a question based upon that now let's solve a question based upon that so if uh, mu is equal to 0 now it's given that if mu is equal to 0 and uh, standard deviation is equal to standard deviation square is equal to 1 over there that is variance and uh, that particular case it is called the st uh, standard normal variable okay in that particular case the normal variable will be said to be the standard normal variable over there and the graph of the normal distribution is bell shaped like we just told i just told you that it's a bell shaped graph over there and it is symmetric about the mean over there and the total area covered under the curve is one if we look at the total area it's actually one over there and for that it is divided by half over there so 0.5 probability over here 0.5 probability over here so that's a case related to it and further the quartile deviation is 0.6745 quartile deviation the part actually which will be dividing it to four equal parts over there the points the three points which will be dividing it to three uh, into four equal parts over there that's actually quartile division it is 0.6745 you have to memorize it that is it is 0.6745 and the mean division and the mean division is 0.7979 okay so that's a case related to it and if you just look at the mean median mode that is equal to mu for this particular scenario okay so that's for the normal distribution now let's solve a question based on that so normal population of 1000 employees has a mean income of rupees 100 uh, of rupees 800 now we're talking about the 1000 employees so n over here is equal to what it is equal to 1000 over here and mean is given that is mu over here it is given to be 800 over here okay so that's the average that is given and variance that is sigma square that is sigma square that is given to be 400 over here that is given to be 400 so we are to find the number of employees where income lies between the 750 and 820 over there okay so let's take the case that uh, we are just drawing on the graph over there and uh, we are having average income that is equal to 800 over here and let's draw the graph and uh, we are just considering it to be normal distribution over there because number is quite large so we will be considering that it's a normal distribution and for the the first case where the salary is lying between the 750 and uh, 8 820 so 750 let's say it's uh, somewhat here and 820 it's uh, somewhat here so we basically need to calculate this particular area over here we need to calculate this particular area over here and that can be done by using the z value so z value is equal to what it's equal to x bar minus mu divided by sigma over here x bar minus mu divided by sigma over here 
Now that is actually equal to what? That is actually equal to the x bar minus mu divided by sigma x bar. It was actually written wrong over there. It's not sigma. It's sigma x bar. That is the standard deviation of the sample distribution over there. Okay. So that's the case related. Now what is actually x bar over there? x bar would be the different things that we are con considering over there like in one case we'll be taking it to be 750 in the other one it will be take we will be taking it to be 820 over there and for the the second one it's related to we have to calculate the sigma x bar now i told you that if it is a normal distribution in that particular case there are two things that we are having that is uh, x bar is equal to mu first of all and the second one it was related to what sigma x bar is equal to what it is equal to sigma divided by under root of n okay now what is actually sigma x bar what will be the sigma x bar? It will be sigma. Now what is actually sigma? Variance, it is given to be 400. Variance you are given with 400. Now what is sigma? It is a standard deviation. Sigma is the standard deviation. Okay. So under root of the variance will be equal to what? That will be the standard deviation. So under root of the same, that is equal to 20 is the standard deviation. The standard deviation is 20 over here. Okay. So it will be particularly 20 divided by under root of n. That is equal to 1000. That is equal to 1000 over here. So what it will be? It will be 1000 under root that is equal to 31.62 so it will be 20 divided by 31.62 that is equal to 0 0.6325 0 0.6325 so that's actually related to what that's actually related to the sigma x bar in this particular scenario sigma x bar in this particular scenario over here okay now we'll be solving the question based upon that let's have a look at it let's have a uh, look at it over here so we were having the values related to 750 and 820 so that's actually the z value we are to calculate for these particular things over there for the x bar value ranging from uh, from the x value ranging from 750 to 820 over here okay so that's the case okay now in this particular scenario over here uh what will be the different values so for z value i already told you it's actually equal to x bar minus mu divided by sigma x bar over here so we'll be solving this one uh, so, so that x bar in first scenario it is 750 and what is mu mu is given to be what it is given to be 800 now so it is 800 and divided by sigma x bar divided by the sigma x bar in this particular scenario that will be equal to what so it will be 0 0.6325 over here now over here we'll be having the values that is 0 0.6325 now I think there is some uh, question actually actually this question was from the Macmillan itself but uh, there was some issue with the question over there that's why I'm repeating it over here. So over here just uh, pay attention to it the thing is that in case of the in case over here we have to take the sigma x bar in the denominator when we are calculating the z value when we are calculating the uh, z value over here where is in the case where is in the case of the book it is actually explained to be sigma simply okay. So we have just amended the question based upon that. I'm just repeating in the thing because I just explained the thing this way so that you can understand that we are to put sigma x bar in the denominator over there and not the sigma over there. But I'm writing that uh, for sample, we are saying for sample, let's say variance is 400. We are amending this question and we are saying that the sample variance is uh, 400. Sample variance is 400. Now in this particular case, you need not to calculate the uh, you need not to calculate the sigma x bar that is already given to you and uh, uh, we are already given with the sigma x bar square that is a variance that is given to be 400 over there and sigma x bar will be equal to what it will be equal to 20 okay so directly we can actually be putting the values over there and now it is quite simpler to the calculations of the macmillan now okay because there were some differences in the quotients over there okay so it is particularly minus 50 divided by 20 over here for the first case and for the second scenario it will be 820 minus 800 that is equal to 20 divided by minus 20 over there uh, 820 uh, 820 minus 800 divided by 20 over there that is 1 over there so the value over here is actually basically ranging from what it's actually ranging from minus 2.5 minus 2.5 and for the z value is ranging from minus 2.5 to 1 over here so that's the case related it but now let's have a look at the z table value now let's consider the uh, z table value of the same and uh, we'll be writing the values for the same okay and uh, after that i'll be showing the same on the graph over here so that you can understand that where to add where to subtract and something like that okay so over here let's have a z table value so value will be z table value first of all it's equal to what it's equal to uh, 2.5 over here now 2.5 value is particularly here that is a 2.5 value we are having here over here uh, here over so for 2.5 we are not to consider first of all active science so 2.5 value it is 0 0.4938 and for value of 1 we are having the value 0 0.3413 0 0.3413 okay so these are the value we have just uh, taken from the z table value okay after that it's related to the uh, probability distribution graph over here now here it is here it was the mean of 800 and the value of the 
salary from 750 to 820 over there. So this is 820 and this is 750 and we are actually concerned about this particular part over here. Okay, so I told you the probability for this one is what it is 0 0.5 and we calculated for this particular part for above one it we calculated it to be what we calculated it to be 0 0.3413 0 0.4 this particular part the probability is 0 0.3413 and for this particular part we calculated the probability to be 0 0.4983 4938 okay so we have to add them above so as to get the total probability of this area so as to get the total probability of this area okay so kindly do not cram the thing just draw it on the graph over there so as to check that whether you need to add it up or subtract it so if they if the question is related to that we want to calculate the uh, number of employees which will be in between okay so in that particular case we are going to add them up and further if it was said that we want to actually uh, calculate the probability where the salary where the average salary will be lesser than will be lesser than 750 if we were concerned about this area and further the uh, the number of person or the probability over there where the salary would be greater than 820 in that particular case we must have subtracted these particular probability values okay we'll be actually also be learning about this now first of all let me just tell you about this now the second part it is actually related to probability of x where uh, it is greater than 700 so simply we will be calculating the z value that is a uh, 700 minus 800 divided by 20 over there that is minus 100 divided by 20 minus 100 divided by the 20 over here that is equal to z is equal to uh, it is equal to 5 over here so in that particular case we are having the values for that particular case so that will be equal to 1 so if the value is greater than uh, 3 over there the value is equal to 1 over uh, that will be equal to 0 0.5 not 1 that is equal to 0 0.5 over here okay so that's actually equal to 0 0.5 so the z value for minus 5 it is equal to 0 0.5 over here okay and further we have to calculate the points where the salary will be greater than 700 so let's take the case that 700 is somewhere here okay and we are having no bar over here okay so we want to calculate all this area so we want to calculate all this area okay now for this particular thing now for this particular thing you will be doing what we will be simply doing what we will be uh, subtracting one one minus the thing one minus related to probability of the same like over here we are having the probability for this particular region for this particular region we are having the probability of 0 0.5 over here and for this particular region the probability because it is actually divided into two halves so by the mean it is divided by two halves for the for the uh, right side we are having the 0 0.5 probability for this side we are having the 0 0.5 probability in total okay and for 700 also we calculated the probability it came out to be 0 0.5 over here so what will be the probability that the salary will be greater than one or greater than 700 over there so that will be equal to 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 0.5 plus 0.5 now you must be curious that there is no, nothing is explained like upper limit but for this particular thing we are already having the probability of 0.5 so we'll be adding them up uh, them up as such okay so that is the thing related to it that is the thing related to it now after that it's related to the third part of the question that it says we have to calculate the probability of uh, average salary being greater than 760 so it is 760 minus 800 divided by 20 that is 40 divided by 20 that is equal to 2 over here minus 2 okay but we are not to consider the negative sign when we are looking for the z values so 2 is having the value equal to 0 0.4772 0 0.4772 that is the value we are having right now and we want to actually calculate the salary where the value is greater than 760 over there greater than 760 over there okay so for that particular case we just drawing the value again and over here we have the average value of 800 and let's say 760 is somewhere else or somewhere here so we want to we actually calculated the probability for this area we actually calculated the probability for this area which is actually 0 0.4772 and further we will be adding the probability of this area too that is 0.5 over here so that will be we will be adding 0 0.52 okay so the total probability will be equal to what it will be equal to 0 0.9772 over here 0 0.9772 over here okay so that's the case related to it I hope that you must have understood the question. Now let's move further. It's related to the credit risk. 
No, when you are actually lending uh, or giving the advances, in that particular case, you are lending on behalf of a mortgage or you are giving the unsecured loans over there, then definitely there is a possibility that there can be a default on the customer side that he or she will not be reaping the loan back. That's actually the credit risk. And credit risk is particularly of three types. First of all, it's related to credit default risk. When the person is defaulting in the payments over there, like if there was a default in the payments for the 90 days and the account turned out to be NP, that is a non-performing asset over there. Now we are having the different categories. We are having the standard account, we are having the NP account and NP is further categorized into the uh, substandard assets over there or the uh, doubtful assets over there or the loss assets over there. So if the account is NP, then in particular case, it is not performing and uh, the default has already occurred over there. So that's actually the credit default risk. The other one, it is a concentration risk. So when you have lent only to one person, one borrower is with a with a large exposure, let's take the case bank ABC has lent to a corporate amount rupees 1000 crore and further bank XYZ has lent rupees 1000 crore over here to particularly 10,000 beneficiaries, 10,000 different applicants, loan applicants over there. Now, definitely, if there will be default in one case, definitely it will lead to what? It will lead to more loss over here. But if there will be loss in this particular case, let's take the case that 100 people, 100 persons defaulted in that particular case, still the money is safeguarded. Still the money is safeguarded. That's actually related to concentration. So bank ABC is having the concentration over there and that's the concentration risk imposed. Okay. After that, it's related to country risk. Now, when the bank is lending to the government over there, which is having the sovereignty and the further in that particular case, they are actually uh, safeguarded to the risks over there because you cannot sue the government itself. Na? So that's a country risk. So that's a country risk over there. Okay. Now, what is the expected loss over there? Let's have a look at it. So expected loss is actually related to what? It's actually related to three terms. One, it is a probability uh, of default over there. That what is the probability of default that the some accounts will actually be defaulted over there? Then exposure at default. That what if the default occurred in that particular case? At what on what exposure the default can occur? Okay, so that's actually related to exposure at default over there. And further, it is the LGD that is loss given default. That is equal to LGD. That is a loss given default and uh, loss given default. Like uh, if the default will occur, what amount will be lost in that particular case? That is loss given default over there. Now let's solve a question based upon that. So let a credit of rupees 20 lakh was extended to a company one year ago and determine the expected loss of the exposure if the company defaults completely. So company had defaulted the complete amount where the loss given default is 50% over there. Okay. Now particularly we are having the exposure at default that is 20 lakh rupees that is the exposure at default and further what was the probability of default what was the probability of default probability of default was 100 100 percent because the company has defaulted in 100 percent over the amount over there completely the company has completely defaulted okay so it's 100 percent what will be the loss uh, loss given default that will be particularly 50 percent because the loss given default is 50 percent so lgd is actually 50 percent over there so what will be the thing related to it? it will be 100 percent into 200 uh, in probability of default that is 100 percent and multiplied by the 20 lakh rupees that is the ead that is exposure at default and for the multiplied by 1 minus lgd 1 minus not pd 1 minus lgd it would be it would be 1 minus lgd that is loss given default that is equal to what and that, that gave the expected loss to be 10 lakh rupees over here that gave the expected loss to be 10 lakh rupees over here that's related to it and then it's related to var that is a value at risk that is a value at risk. Now, this is actually related to the risk associated with the portfolio of the individual organization over there. That this under the normal circumstances, this particular loss can occur in the organization over there. That's actually related to VAR. And this particular topic is covered in detail in the topics to come over there. So don't worry about it. And further after that, it's related to options options over there. Now, an option is particularly related to a contract, related to a contract where I'll be having a right, I'll be having a right either to sell or as to purchase, but it will not be an obligation. Like in case of options, we are having two type of options that is call option and put option. Now, call option gives us a right to purchase, right to buy. It gives us a right to buy and the put option gives us a right to sell. Okay. Let's take the case that uh, I basically entered into option contract where the strike price, strike price is that particular price at which I can be executing the option contract over there. Okay. So let's take the case the strike price is rupees 100 uh, is rupees uh, 120 over there. And further the price, the market value of the share is actually rupees uh, 200 over here. The day I actually entered into the contract, the share price was rupees 100. And further it was related to that I can be buying, I can be buying the share 
हियर एट रुपीज वन ट्वेंटी आफ्टर पैसेज ऑफ वन मंथ आफ्टर पैसेज ऑफ वन मंथ ओवर दियर एंड लेट्स टेक द केस दैट आफ्टर वन मंथ द प्राइस ऑफ द शेयर वॉज रुपीज टू हंड्रेड प्राइस ऑफ द शेयर वॉज रुपीज टू हंड्रेड नो आई हैव एक्चुअली बॉट द कॉल ऑप्शन आई हैव बॉट द कॉल ऑप्शन सो दैट गिव्स मी राइट टू बाय दैट आई कैन बी बाइंग एट रुपीज वन ट्वेंटी इन कंसिडर्ड टू द फैक्ट दैट वॉट्स ऑफ द प्राइस मार्केट प्राइस वुड बी इट विल नॉट बी अफेक्टिंग इट ओके सो शुड आई बी एक्जीक्यूटिंग दिस पर्टिकुलर इफ दिस पर्टिकुलर कॉन्ट्रैक्ट डेफिनेटली आई शुड बी एक्जीक्यूटिंग वाई बिकॉज राइट नाउ द शेयर प्राइस इज रुपीज टू हंड्रेड द शेयर प्राइस इज रुपीज टू हंड्रेड वेयर एज आई एम अंडर अ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट वेयर आई कैन बी एक्जीक्यूटिंग द कॉन्ट्रैक्ट एंड कैन बाय द बाय द शेयर एट रुपीज वन ट्वेंटी सो आई बी बाइंग द शेयर एट रुपीज वन ट्वेंटी फ्रॉम द ऑप्शन सेलर एंड फर्दर विल बी सेलिंग इन टू द मार्केट एट अ प्रॉफिट ऑफ रुपीज एटी ओवर हिया ओके सो दैट्स अ केस रिलेटेड इट एंड वट इफ द शेयर प्राइस ऑन द डे ऑफ द एग्जीक्यूशन ऑफ द ऑप्शन इट वेंट डाउन टू रुपीज नाइनटी It went down to rupees ninety. So in that particular case, should I be executing my right to uh, right to buy? No, definitely not. Buy? Why? Because I am actually able to buy the share in the market at rupees ninety under the contract. I am getting the share at one twenty over there. So I won't be executing that. Okay, so that's the case. Okay, so strike price or exercise price is that particular price at which the call holder or the option holder can be executing the contract over there. After that, it's related to time to maturity over there. Time to maturity is particularly related towards the value of uh, an option on an uh, date of maturity is just difference between the strike price and stock price. Like I told you that uh, when you will be executing the option on that particular day, the value of this particular option that will be equal to the difference between the two two prices over there. Like I am having the uh, share price right now one ninety, and for that I can get the share from at the in the contract at rupees one twenty. Definitely I'll be executing the contract, and the value of the option is particularly what it is seventy rupees only, na? Okay, so that's the case. Okay, but but this is particularly related to what this is actually the value that is actually there on the date of execution. It is an intrinsic value. It is an intrinsic value. But prior to the date of execution, but prior to the date of execution of the option over there, prior to the date of the maturity of the option over there, the option carries a time value. The option carries a time value that is, and that particular value is in addition to the intrinsic value. So on the date of execution, on date of maturity, there is intrinsic value only. But prior to the date of execution of maturity, there is intrinsic plus additional value to it, and that is a time value of the. That is the time value of the maturity over there, and time to maturity value actually decreases as the maturity comes closer over there. So that's the case related to it. Okay, and uh, that would be all related to this particular video. I hope that you must have loved the con uh, learned the concepts related to the same. So do rate the video out of the ten, and for the do enroll right now visiting the website iibf dot info over there, and the uh, coupon code uh, is available. That is uh, exams where you can get flat eighty two percent off on all the listed courses. So do enroll right now and start. preparing for the same thank you so much and see you again in the next video